Let's talk about some routes of administration of medication and some examples of that. I have several things up here on my med cart and let's just go through them and explore the different routes, forms of, of these medications. Okay, as you can see, this is a tablet, a pill. So what route do you think that would be? Oral, right? Yeah, this would be an oral med. So most of your pills are going to be oral. However, some can also be administered rectal if needed, which at times you'll get an order like that, usually when somebody can no longer swallow. But generally, if it's a, 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 a pill, or a tablet, or a capsule, it will be oral. Now, some of your um, capsules could be sublingual and definitely the tiny, tiny tablet of nitroglycerin is going to be sublingual. Sub means below, lingual means your tongue. So you lift up the tongue and you put that tiny little pill or tablet underneath there and you let it, you just let it dissolve. That is sublingual. If you ever lifted up your tongue and look at it, underneath there's lots and lots of blood vessels. Those blood vessels, take that drug and pull it into the bloodstream right away. It's actually much faster than oral. Okay, so that would be sublingual. Now, if I had an oral pill that I had to give and I had a sublingual med that I had to give, which one should I give first? The oral med or the sublingual med? What do you think? Do you think the oral med should go first? You could swallow it, get it down, and then give the sublingual because if you give the sublingual first, you're going to have to wait two or three or four or five minutes before it's totally dissolved before you can give the oral one. Okay? So it might be better to give the oral one first. Parenteral. Parenteral is actually the correct medical name, word, for something that is injected into the skin, like this EpiPen. I know, it's worth more than its weight in gold, right? And if you ever have to carry one with you. The EpiPen has a needle in there, and so therefore the medication is given via the skin. As you remember, med aids are not, to, are not allowed to uh, administer meds via parenteral um, route, which would be IV or um, injectables but this is an example of a parenteral medication route. How about um, topical? Topical, this is a wound powder that you would put on a wound. Uh, topical could also be something like this. This is Voltaren gel. It's for arthritis generally, and you would put it on the joint where there's pain. So that would be a, an example of a topical or perhaps something like this. This is a lidoderm patch. There's also other topical meds such as like a, um, a nitroglycerin patch, or they also make some uh, like duragesic um, and uh, patches that are very, very strong opiate patches that you have to be very careful with. Anytime you're using anything that is topical, always make sure to wear your gloves. These drugs are designed to go right through your skin. That's what they're made for. And if you start taking off um, nitro patches in the evening without gloves, you're gonna get a really bad headache. And if you put on or take off any of these meds, it's going through your skin just as much as it's going through theirs. So keep that in mind. Um, I have heard of stories where they took fentanyl patches off residents and um, then came up positive for a drug test just from taking the patches off without gloves on. So please wear your gloves when you're doing anything topical. Also then, we have some inhalants, and here's some examples of in, um, drugs that would be administered via inhaling. 
This would be, now this is a powder. Many people have seen this. This is Advair, you cock it back and forth, and then you put your mouth over here and inhale, and the powder goes in the lungs. It's to treat COPD or, um, or uh, asthma, that type of a thing. Here's your regular inhaler, as you know, and this would be used in a nebulizer, a breathing treatment. Actually, in the book, it says that your inhaled drugs are considered to be topicals, just like your eye drops and um, nasal and ear as well. Subcategory would be inhalant. Okay. Now, I also want to now talk a little bit. Oh, I forgot one. Rectal. There's also rectal as well, which a med aid can administer. Huh? Lucky for you. So um, I do want to talk now a little bit about local versus systemic. This is important that you know this. This also is on your test, so make sure you understand this well. Local meds work where you put them, all right? So if it's a drug that's going to work right where you administer it, it's local. Systemic would be one that goes throughout the whole body, okay? So let's take this. Does this have to go throughout the whole body in order for it to work? No, no. This you take and it works right where you put it, in your lungs. Now, do some of the effects go systemic and affect the rest of your body? Yep, they do, but not, that. that's more of a side effect. That's more on a side. The main action of this drug works right in the lungs, right where you apply it. It does not need to go through the bloodstream in order to work, okay? So these would be local, as would this, right? This is a wound powder, a healing wound powder. It would work right where I put it. Now this patch is lidoderm. This is a lidocaine, the same thing they, the dentist numbs you with. This is in a topical form. This will work right where I put it. So if my elbow hurts, I'd put it on my elbow. This would be local. It works where I put it. It doesn't need to go through my bloodstream to be active. However, if I had a fentanyl patch, a duragesic patch, or a nitro patch, that would be systemic. And it needs to be put over a slight piece of fat. You can't put it on just skin and bones. It needs to go over a fat pad, even just a little tiny bit of fat pad and it's absorbed into the fat and then slowly released into the bloodstream from that. And your fentanyl patches last three days. So can you see that it would be systemic because it has to go through, you put it here even though, or somewhere in this region, even though it might be an amputated foot a freshly amputated foot that is giving the pain, you still put the patch here because it's systemic. It's not working where I put it. It has to go through the body system in order to be effective, okay? Here's one for you. Antacid. This is a uh, generic Tums. <laughs> okay, would this be local or systemic? I'm taking it orally, and generally speaking, most meds that are taken orally, like these, this is Prilosec, generic Prilosec, and this is, um, gen well, it's metropolol, a beta blocker for high blood pressure. Oopsie. These are systemic. You have to swallow them to go through the bloodstream in order for them to be effective. This is local. Even though it's oral, it's local. Because this is actually calcium carbonate, which is alkalinic, opposite of acid. Why do you take it? Because you have acid, too much acid in your stomach. So you take this to help neutralize that acid. Does it have to go through the bloodstream to work? No. You just put this down there and it neutralizes it. It doesn't need to go through the bloodstream to be effective, not at all. Rather, it's local. Now, will it eventually become systemic? Yes, 
but not for the reason for it to work, to do what its intended use was. Unless you're taking it for the calcium to help build your bones, but that's another story. Okay, I hope that helped clear things up. Local, systemic. Local works where you put it, systemic has to go through the bloodstream in order for it to be effective.